Hadji, many thanks for joining us. First of all, how have things been for you over the past couple of months? Um, they've been all right, to be fair. Obviously, it's not the most ideal situation to be in right now, but obviously you have to look at the bigger picture of what's going on. Um, I was quite shocked when I found out I had the virus, and it's, it's quite scary that I showed no symptoms at all, really, and that that means that people could be just walking around well, I'm not even walking around us at home and they could have it as well. So that was quite scary to, to think about. But I've just been trying to keep myself busy. To I don't know, it's quite hard about football because obviously football is usually an everyday thing. So it's been quite tough not being able to, to go play and not being able to play. But I think there's the big picture that you have to think about. So. I guess things like that kind of helps me along with it all. Yeah, of course. And obviously during lockdown, how does that work in terms of keeping up with your training regimes, obviously having to do it from home? Have you been able to keep up? Yeah, we've been quite fortunate to obviously be allowed to go out to exercise. So I've been trying to utilise that as much as possible with going on runs and cycling. I was struggling a bit because actually fell into Ramadan so I was fasting and happened to to still keep exercising which is normal for me I've been doing it every year but it's just another little factor that kind of adds to it trying to do like home workouts and things like that it's it's not ideal but I think you just have to try and make the most of the situation you're in so doing the most you can will always push you on it can always help because everyone else is in the same situation now. So if you're still doing more than everyone else is when they're just at home, then you can come back on leaps and bounds, really. Yeah, and as you mentioned, having to fast there, that sounds like it's something that would be quite a challenge, you know, in, in the best of times. How do you sort of get around that and take that into consideration when you're training? Um, I kind of... My schedule changes a little bit. so. You can't, you can't eat or drink during daylight hours. So I would try to cycle in the day because that doesn't, because it's only really used my legs. Out. That's quite mental for me. So it doesn't, I don't feel very thirsty or hungry when I'm cycling. So that was the main thing that I was doing. I was trying to go on long cycles to obviously get something in my legs and then look to try to go on a run in the evenings. Because obviously I eat when the sun goes down, so I feel a bit more energised and ready to go out on a run. But overall, I think the main factor, that like, because the weather's got quite hot now, it's quite hard with aspects of not being able to drink water. That's a big one, because mentally, like usually when I'm training, I'll be drinking a lot, make sure that my hydration levels are up, but obviously I can't. But it's just something that you just... The first couple of days, the first couple of weeks, they're the hardest. And then you kind of just get used to it. Like even now, um, I don't really feel hungry in the day. But I try still to top up, top up my body, hydrate myself properly and look after myself. Nice one. And obviously you mentioned you were one of the players who tested positive for coronavirus. Obviously it's great to see that you're fully recovered now. Um, just talk us through what the recovery process is. Is it just a case of sort of, isolating and staying inside for the duration of the government guidelines? Yeah, I just had to stay at home and just keep monitoring myself and like the people that were around me, they had to monitor them, monitor themselves as well. Just because if you show any signs of symptoms, the period extends from the time that you show symptoms. So fortunately, everyone else around me, like people in my household, they easily could have had it from me just by just not knowing and just being in the same house. But, um, yeah, it's still, everyone was fine in my household and they, no one showed any symptoms. So it was all all right. One of the things you have done during lockdown is you got the whole city to sing the Pompey Chimes. Just talk us through how that came about and what the motivation behind that was for you. Um, so it was actually from teacher at my secondary school 
we still have a lot of contact and um, I've been looking to go back into the school to to talk to some kids and stuff like that. And he actually came to me with the idea and I was like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And I actually shared it for him. But he come to me, he was like, we could do something basically for the whole city, obviously, because everyone's inside. And I was like, yeah, that's a, that's a really good idea. Shared it along for him. And then luckily it actually got a lot of people behind it and he was actually really happy with how many people was onto it and I was quite happy as well because it's nice that recognition as well. Yeah and it even got picked up by the news I think it was on the front page were, were you surprised by how many people really got behind it? Yeah I was well I, too far I don't think I was that surprised because obviously Portsmouth the City everyone kind of they love the city they love the football club so all the fans are exceptional all the time. So I wasn't, I was expecting people to, to jump on it because everyone's missing in that front park. Yeah, and for yourself, uh, how did you do it? Were you out on your doorstep singing or out the window? Out the window. No, it's Just put my head out the window. I heard a couple of people around. Obviously, I live in Fratton as well, so I heard some people around. It was, it was quite nice, actually, people getting involved. Lovely stuff. Now, for the academy season, that obviously came to an abrupt end for obvious reasons. Were you disappointed by that, that you weren't able to sort of see it through to its conclusion? Yeah, I was actually really disappointed because obviously I missed a lot of the first season, like the first league, essentially. And the second league's always, we play better teams, the fixtures are a bit better. So that's the one that I think most people usually look forward to. Because one game against different teams and it's all the better teams in the league, so it's really a good challenge for everyone. And it's it's the league that you want to win. So obviously everyone in the academy was really positive going into it. And I was really positive as well because getting back with the academy boys and playing, I was really looking forward to it. And then obviously, unfortunately, it come to an end. But it's just... It's just what's going on right now. So you can't be too disappointed. You just kind of got to get on with it, really, don't you? But I was looking forward to playing with the boys again and hopefully winning the league. But it's the bigger picture at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah, of course. And it does give you uh, an opportunity with that season being cancelled, the League One season being suspended, to sort of look back on the season so far. If you do that, what are some of the highlights in your eyes? What have they been for you? Um, I was fortunate, obviously disappointed with the injury, but um, positive coming into towards the end of the season, being playing in the Czech trade. Obviously, we won, and that was really positive for me because just being amongst that environment again, and that's that's kind of the trophy that we we want. Essentially, we want to be two time winners, and then obviously we went through to get to the final. So to be a part of that for me. Again, that was that was really nice. And then being on, I was with the first team, training with the first team, I, I enjoyed that a lot as well because obviously going from the academy up, it kind of, it was a bit of pride for me that I'm, I'm getting there essentially. Like I'm slowly coming on to be able to play in the first team, hopefully. Um, so, and actually featuring on the bench as well in, FA Cup and travelling with the squad it was really like for me I was quite proud of myself like looking back at the start of the season with the injury and then coming through to that like it kind of made made all the process that I went through a bit more worth it like I think people look at injuries and think they're just negative but for me it was an experience for me that hopefully I won't ever have again it was a big learning curve for me and then afterwards, I think I started working hard because I had some time to make up for. And in that period of time, um, it was quite good for me because I did come on, was trying to do as much as I could, was looking after myself and my body better. Because at the back of my mind, I was always thinking like I could, I could get injured again. So I think for me, it was quite good that I started doing that because it got me them experiences of travelling with the team 
and um, being on the bench and having that whole experience around it, which for me is what, that's what I want to be doing. That's what I want to be pushing on to do week in, week out. And hopefully to make my league debut soon. I think I'm nearing onto it a bit more now and I just have to keep working hard and it's there for the taking if I keep working hard. So I'm happy that it's in kind of my eyesight and I can see it. Yeah, and halfway through the season as well, you signed your first pro contract. Have, have things changed for you at all since then or has it just been, you know, keeping um, it down and keeping at I've it? I've been a Pompey player always, still Pompey player now. So for me, that's... Uh, it's just an honour, really, playing for Portsmouth all the time. Obviously, signing a professional contract, everyone was proud, my whole family, uh, all my friends, a lot of fans as well. So I come from the city. It's nice, really, just a bit of recognition for what I've been doing, but the hard work doesn't stop now. And all it is for me is just it's extra time to push on, to get into the first team, and that's what I plan on doing. 